Hey nerds, Jerry Bear here. Welcome back to the channel. It is Friday. Time for some fan film stuff. Before we dive in, I have things planned for a series. Uh, but I'm going to kind of stick with Star Wars theory here for a little bit. Going back to them with another video that I was like, I really want to watch, but I might as well go ahead and do a reaction for it this Friday. I might as well go ahead and slot it in. So this video is called What If Order 66 Failed? Animate it. Uh, this is again by Star Wars Theory. This is a fan fiction by them posted back in September of this year with over a million views already. This was, uh, has a runtime of eight minutes and 36 seconds. So if you want to watch the full thing uninterrupted, a link will be in the description box down below. Also in the description box will be links to other channels, the stream, social medias, everything else in between. And if you guys are new here, feel free to subscribe because daily content, if there's a day, there's a reaction, I got something for you. And, uh, yeah, I mean, with that out of the way, honestly, I'm going to go and make this full screen and get into it because the video is a little longer than usual. So the quicker we get it done, you know, we ain't got to listen to me ramble for 85 minutes because it'd be like that sometimes. Jerry works best behind the scenes. Let's get it, man. I love Star Wars series. He, he's got good content. Some of my favorite content on the Internet. As we know Order 66 was the order given by Emperor Palpatine just after the death of Mace Windu and the transformation of Anakin into Darth Vader. Facts. The order was programmed into the clones' heads by way of an inhibitor chip, which controlled their minds to take out the Jedi and serve the Chancellor. The rest of the events that led from this are what we know today. But what if we go into another timeline, an alternate universe, and one that I think makes much more sense in some ways? What if Order 66 failed? Well, then we didn't yeah, have we wouldn't have the Empire then, would we? Mastering the Force above all else. Their first and foremost abilities were to be able to sense their surroundings and feel any threats, such feel. as when Anakin and Obi-Wan could even feel the Kuhans that attempted to poison Padme. The Jedi not being able to sense the complete 180 turn of the clones, raising their guns at them and firing, would have been enough of a shift in the Force just as Yoda had felt in order for them to escape or to have an advantage to fight back. That is terrifying. The Jedi Temple events, however, would continue to play out the way they did as Anakin was too powerful for any Jedi in the temple. He would then go to Mustafar as ordered while the rest of the clones would continue to take out the Jedi, slowly being killed one by one by more advancing Jedi. Plo Koon would still be alive. Plo so Koon! I love him. Adi Mundi, Sindrelig, and the list goes on. Of course, not every Jedi would live. The clones were a formidable force. However, the more powerful and more force-attuned ones would sense the matter immediately. After Anakin was ordered to Mustafar by Palpatine, Yoda would meet Obi-Wan at the raided Jedi Temple, and they would send a beacon out to all of the survivors of Order 66, where we would essentially see almost the entire Jedi Council- Got an ad coming up, hold on. He looked like Zer from Destiny right here. To execute. He wouldn't have heard back from the commanders because one, they'd all be dead, and two, he'd assumed they were all still carrying out orders. Yoda would send Fair. Obi-Wan and Plo Koon to Mustafar to seize and capture Anakin to be tried in the Galactic Court, while he would take Kiari Mundi, Sindrelic, and Aelis Secura to confront the Emperor while the remaining Jedi would dissipate to hunt down as many clones as they could. Jedi on the After hunt? That was terrifying. He and Plo would sneak onto her ship until they landed on the fiery planet. Yoda and the Masters would fly to the Chancellor's office in Coruscant to once and for all bring an end to the Sith Lord who had been right under their very noses for so many years. As Padme's ship landed, she stepped out to meet Anakin when he looked up to see Obi-Wan and Plo Koon standing in the opening of the ship's extended plank. Their silhouettes almost godlike as the light cast a shadow illuminating their outlines. So very similar. Lost in the red blaze of the red bubbling. It's episode three. Anakin yelled at Padme, choking her. Same thing. Plo, who was much more quick to stop this in Obi Wan, jumped in the air and shot Force Judgment onto Anakin. This was Plo's equivalent to Sith Force lightning. Yep. However, not as powerful, it still hurt Anakin enough to stop his attack on Padme. As he let go, she Padme. stumbled backwards and ran up to Obi Wan. This angered Vader even more. The betrayal he felt was compounded only with hatred he couldn't even compare to the heat of the planet's melting core. As he ignited his lightsaber in unison to Obi-Wan and Plo, the battle began. Sidious frowned at Yoda as he watched his royal red guards fall to the floor. Yoda and the three Jedi Masters entered his office, all igniting their lightsabers. 
Palpatine tried to escape, knowing he was no match for three masters and Grand Master Yoda. Yeah, you ain't doing shit. Strategy, he turned to face them, telling Yoda... That is terrifying. Your arrogance blinds you, Master Yoda. And ignited his lightsaber. He attempted the same strategy as he had with Mace and his <laughs> that weird sound. Rusting his saber into Sakura's heart as she laid on the floor motionless. His speed was far too ferocious for them. Yoda jumped off the wall and flipped to block Palpatine's attack on Kiari Mundi, who went to strike Palpatine's head but missed and got paralyzed by a jolt of force lightning. As he withered on the floor, Yoda watched as Drelig's head rolled next to him. He was astounded by Palpatine's speed and precision, swinging as fast as he could and blocking just as hard. The two were evenly matched, as Yoda sent Palpatine flying back with a strong force push, using this time to run to Ki-Adi, who started to regain his consciousness once again. Helping him up, the two Jedi Masters ran towards Sidious. Anakin and Obi-Wan exchanged immense hits while Plo attacked when he could. His lightsaber abilities were amazing, but he was not on the same level as Anakin here. As they continued to fight down the corridor and into the station, Anakin could feel himself being cornered by the two Jedi Masters. Yeah. Obi-Wan from the left and Plo from yeah. the right. Anakin was boxed in. Front flipping over Plo Koon, he landed attempting to strike him. However, he was stopped by Obi-Wan. When Plo used this advantage to shoot the most powerful amount of force judgment onto Anakin as he possibly could, Skywalker dropped to the ground, uh, shrieking uh, in agony as yellow thunderbolts crawled up his face, body, and bones like spiders with daggers for legs. Kenobi and Kuhn stepped over him, lightsaber and skull. They unanimously announced, In the name of the Galactic Senate of the Republic, you are under arrest. Palpatine had to decide quickly which Damn, they done caught my boy Vader! Mundi ...and Yoda rushed him. He knew Yoda was far more powerful, so he decided Facts. to take out the weaker opponent first, that being Mundi. This is what Yoda anticipated. Quickly running up to Palpatine and flipping over him, Palpatine became confused and blocked Ki-Adi's attack, then turned to block Yoda's when he was cut in half by the Grand Master. Laying on the floor, unable to move, his fate had taken the same turn of events as his apprentice, Darth Maul. With Obi-Wan and Plo returning to the temple as Anakin sat in the back of the ship, cuffed at the hands and feet, they went to the Chancellor's office as they saw lights flashing from within the windows. Meeting Yoda at the docking bay, he and Ki-Adi boarded the ship to take Padme to a droid crew to deliver her unborn children. Her babies. Anakin remained restrained as his yellow eyes stared in hatred at the Jedi Masters who tried to figure out what to do with him. Banishing him from the council and the temple, stripping him of his Jedi status, the Galactic Senate appointed Bail Organa as Chancellor and moved to sentence Anakin to spend an eternity in prison. Once the security footage of the massacres at the temple, including the slaughter of the younglings, were presented, Padme would survive. Holy shit, children, dude. This Luke is bonkers. Would be trained from infancy in the Jedi Temple with Yoda, Obi Wan, Ki Adi Mundi, Plo Koon and subordinate Jedi who had survived as well. And the galaxy would live in peace and harmony with two new Skywalkers eventually growing up to carry on the Jedi way. Until Anakin would be freed from jail by the Saw hands that. of Jar Jar. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to do a part two where Anakin somehow gets out of jail. The Jar Jar part was of course a joke. Yes, but we know. If you'd like to see that, let me know down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this new style of making fan fictions. This is actually an older fan fiction. One of my I like this. Done in December of 2016. So back when the channel wasn't even four months old or so. So forgive me if the story is a little bit weird, but No. It's it's a relic in time, that's for sure. It's an artifact. Yeah, I, I like that a lot, actually. The, I, there was part of me that was like, as soon as he was getting freed, I was like, bro, if that's fucking Darth Jar Jar, I'm done. So I feel like Anakin could, could I mean, he's strong enough if they could break out of jail, unless there's like something restricting his force powers. I don't know if that's a thing in the Star Wars universe or not. But I like the branch, how it keeps its, it's not completely different. You know, obviously Palpatine's getting struck down like Anakin did. So Palpatine is dead. So there's no, the, the rule of two is done. There's nothing along those lines that's going to take place anytime soon, at least. Luke and Leia are out and about. 
there leading the Jedi, Plo Koon, who I think a lot of people really like Plo Koon. Uh, he deserved better, as many of the Jedi did. Not just because they died, but just because they were, they're important in other aspects of the canon. Uh, Plo Koon, that's cool to see him there with the fight helping Obi-Wan. I think regardless, Obi-Wan defeats that version of Vader. I always say Vader's two people. It's pre-suit Vader and then suit Vader. That's why I always used to say Anakin, basically. Like, it's Anakin until he's in the suit. But like, no, he was already dubbed Vader. But it's like, he's still fucking Anakin, though, really. Uh, and once he's in the suit and cut down is when he truly becomes. So I guess you can have the pre-suit Vader if you want to go that route. Uh, I just... Man, like, uh, Marvel's getting the What If series. Yo, Disney, get my man Star Wars theory, get my man right here, and let's do a what if Star Wars thing, man. Let's do this. I would love to see this fully played out. Even if it was just a 25-minute episode, like recapping everything, just take this, expand it, make the scenes a little longer, more detail, um, and I think it'd be solid. I think it'd be good. Did I miss something? Did they say what happened to Mace? Is there a reason Mace wasn't in this? Oh, never mind. Once Mace dies is when the uh, they go to uh, they the Order sixty six happens. But so they're having a second attempt at arresting him because Mace walked in. Okay, I get it. It's it's just a little confusing there for a second. I enjoyed this, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. I don't want to make the video too long. The original links down in the description box, as well as links to everything else, is all down below. Up on screen is gonna be the playlist. And uh, yeah, guys, as always, stay cute, stay hydrated, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you on the next one.